Hey pals, it's Waltech. A while ago, I was on eBay looking for the cheapest graphics card I could find that wasn't absolutely obsolete. Um, I was avoiding things like the 5450, the 3450, the X1300, and all those NVIDIA cards that don't even have a recognizable name, like MVS something? Anyways, when on my search, I finally found the 7570. I sent the guy an offer, $12, got sent to my house, and I, I used it a bit before this video, I'm guilty. But the thing is, I was pleasantly surprised with this card. I think you will be too. But we'll go over. How does a 7570, a $12 graphics card, pan in 2020? Well, I think you'll be surprised. And we're also going to follow up after the stock result, I'm going to show you this card overclocked to achieve max power. Look forward to that. Let's hop into the benches. The hardware I chose to put the 7570 in had to be the only low profile system that I owned. However, I noticed with this system that the GPU was actually a bottleneck despite the low-end processor inside of it. I picked this PC up from a thrift store for $20 without the hard drive, came with 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM, and it has a Intel i3-2120 dual-core processor. And surprisingly, with all these games and benchmarks, the processor was more than enough. Now I do apologize for recording my screen with only a camera, however when it comes to things with low hardware like this, I would like to get the most accurate results and any recording software would just totally bog it down. Anywho, carrying on to the next benchmark, or the first one I should say, we have GTA 4. I would have liked to do GTA 5, however I've had some account issues with Rockstar and I cannot boot into it at the moment. So, on GTA 4, still a very demanding game, might I add, we have gotten the figures of 28 at the lowest, 34 FPS average, and 43 at the highest. However, one thing I found playing this game is that there was this weird occasional stutter that would happen in the more dense areas with the buildings and traffic. Even though I had the density set pretty low on the settings, it seems as if that played a factor. Now, when we overclock in the next episode I make of this card, we may see that disappear, I am not sure yet. But, on to the next benchmark. The next game we benchmarked, albeit I know it's not very new, and it's not too power consuming, but you cannot deny it is still a current esports title, and that game is Rocket League. Now in Rocket League, we got a minimum of 30 FPS, an average of 41 FPS, and a max of 45 FPS. All the settings were changed to performance, not high performance, but performance, which I would consider medium, low medium for graphical settings. All in all, the experience was very smooth with hardly any stutter. I could not feel actually any stutter whatsoever, and it looked great. Just look at it for yourself. The last and final benchmark was CSGO, 1080p, medium settings, and our benchmarks came out to be 25 at the lowest. I didn't even see it for myself when it did it. 41 average and a whole 100 max. Now some people wouldn't consider this enough for this game because it's supposed to be very competitive, but I'm a very casual gamer. And my keyboard was disconnecting in this video, if you noticed. I am not good at this game anyways. I am very trash, so I do not have opinion. But for me, it was very tolerable to play on, and especially considering the card was $12. I couldn't really ask for more of an upgrade in this system. So, after seeing the results for yourself, what do you think? I think for $12, that's quite an increase from just integrated graphics. And we are going to be overclocking it next to see how much we can raise the level of the card without spending a single cent. So stay tuned for that. This has been Waltech, 
And this is me, signing out. Have a good one.